able for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and, also with you. and now we'll have our Advent wreath. So come on, kiddos. They're helping with the Advent wreath today.
and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our, our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you, your, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Bethlehem, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We will read Luke this one. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices. God, my Savior. For the you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit. Passing down the mighty from their thrones, you have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Second reading is from Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken my pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Right, please stand for the gospel. The Gospel for this week is according to Luke, the first chapter. Lord, Glory Lord, to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child left, leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to, comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. 
a relative of a male. Now, both of them do have male relatives, but usually that male is present for, in that interaction. I also feel like we often do a disservice to Elizabeth and Mary because oftentimes their roles are diminished to just being mothers. They're always very serene, and I think about Mary's flowy blue outfit or very tame Mary. Um, but as one of my commentaries this week mentioned, when men are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are called prophets. So what do we then name Elizabeth as she speaks God's hope and word to Mary while being filled with the Holy Spirit? Now what we sometimes forget about these women is their faithful courage, um, their willingness to step forward and do really hard things, and their ability to see beyond themselves to a world created new by God. And so as we reflect on Elizabeth and Mary, we see in their relationship what faithful witness looks like. Now, when you think about the context of this story, Mary has just been through a lot. She's bravely agreed to be the mom of the Messiah. Um, not enthusiastically, I will mention. She says, okay, let your will be done. You know, let it, I'll let it happen. That's fine. Um, but she steps out in faith. And then reality sets in. The angels left, the bright lights are gone, and she starts to think about the effects that this will have on her and her life. She's young, engaged, pregnant, vulnerable, and so she heads out on this journey to visit her cousin, who, um, and she's going quickly, with great haste. She goes looking for someone else who is part of this greater story, too. So she goes to see someone who can maybe help her and calm her down a little bit. When she arrives, Elizabeth greets her with this prophecy and with an acknowledgement of what God will do through her. And what welcome words those must have been. After a long journey, after wondering if she had made this all up in her head, if she was doing the right thing, she hears her cousin's words of hope. And that makes her sing her own song of praise that we just heard as our song today, recognizing God at work here. All right, so now we are six days away from Christmas. As I joke, my countdown is always to Christmas Eve because I'm a pastor, so we're five days in my countdown. And so we're celebrating our last days of Advent. And I think about how we are still called to wait for Christ's coming. These examples of these women teach us so much about how the church is called to act in time and place. It can be hard to make changes and to step out in faith like Mary did. But when she does this, she sought others to walk with her along the way. We too, as a church, are called to surround each other as we make these faithful changes in our lives. As I've worked through some of my own decisions, um, I realized that one of the best ways to think it over and to figure out what to do was to ask others to listen, to give me their perspectives, and to pray for me. I'm sure hearing that I talk things out is shocking to all of you. Um, it isn't always easy finding the courage to do hard things, but when we do, having others to rally around us is so important. And another really important thing that Elizabeth does for Mary when she finally arrives is to bless her, to confirm for her what God is doing, and to remind her that she doesn't go this road alone. This blessing helps her to, to carry her through, not just in the good times, but also during the really difficult times. I especially think about that when she is watching her son on the cross die. It's the hope that God won't leave her, even in the darkest moments, that Elizabeth passes on to her. And I, th I think as a church, we don't do this nearly enough. We have moments liturgically where we bless each other, and that can be really meaningful. But I feel like it's only once in a while. What we need to be aware of is that so many of us are facing situations where faith is what sustains us. 
illness, during a loss of a family member, when we're having new babies or a new job started, or when we're moving. In those situations, it's important that we remind each other that we don't do this alone, that we have a God who goes with us and a community to walk alongside us. We get to be the ones that impart this hope to one another. But that also means that we're called to be invested in each other, to get to know one another, to care about each other, and then to help each other step out in faith, knowing that no matter what we go through, this hope will carry on. Um, when Elizabeth hears, or when Mary hears what Elizabeth says about what God is up to, she responds as well with this song, with her own understanding of what will happen. Now, as I said before, while most of us think of Mary as this naive young girl who always seems a little weak and docile, I think about her words and the ways that she is helping to bring about the kingdom of God to help turn this world upside down. Her words don't actually speak to gentleness and meekness, if you read them. Instead, they speak to a kingdom where the low will be lifted up and the powerful brought down where the hungry will finally have enough, and those who take advantage of them will be turned away. She has faith that this Messiah will bring all of this newness in, and she takes part in the coming of that world. We too are called to be people who live into this kingdom of God, who seek out those who need hope, those whom the world has forgotten or turned their backs on. We are called to be the ones who speak to the injustices that we see, to be examples of kindness and love that others can learn from, and to be lights to those who so often dwell in deep darkness. It means that we connect our faith to every moment of our lives, intentionally asking where the kingdom of God is and where it needs to be brought in, where our hearts need to change, and where we need to prepare for what will be. We play a role in this kingdom, just like these two women did, bringing the life of Christ into every corner of the world. And so as we wait this week, as we anticipate and as we hope, we give thanks for the wonderful examples of these two women. Not always meek and mild, but strong, courageous, fearful at times, and hope-filled. They teach us what it means to be disciples following after God's light, bearing this hope to all who need it. For that, we give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able to confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts and ministries for your service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O God. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings forth abundant life. Hear us, O God. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of our community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is 
Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort any struggling with infertility and those who await test results are in treatment and hospice care and others in need, especially Bob, Doreen, Leona, Earlene, Jan, Sarah, Barb, Judy, Sandy, Pastor Mumford, Joan, Sue, Karen, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Brian, Denise, Dr. Sion, Cindy, Kay, Bishop Lozano, Brian, Betty, Yvette, Eric, Mary Beth, Bill, Kathy, Linda, Pat, Brad, Ron, Sue, Helen, Lisa, Jamie, Chase, Marilyn, David, Craig, Chuck, and Joyce. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace by waving, um, saying hi to each other.
really lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, power of the night, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this, the end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all of the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine that we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. For him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Now, if you'll join me in praying the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we have sought in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Thank you. 